Well, hello and welcome to the final episode of Wildcat Week for this season as we bring you the best of Indiana Wesleyan University sports highlights and updates. I'm Roger Alcock. To get things started today, the Indiana Wesleyan softball team squared off against the Foresters of Huntington University on Tuesday, April the 11th in doubleheader action. In game one, the Wildcats scored the game's only three runs in the third inning on two hits and an error. Senior Casey Carson shut down the Foresters by pitching a complete game shutout. Wildcats won by a score of 3-0. Then senior Casey Carson, she was big on the mound in that game. As we said, seven innings pitched, allowing zero runs. She struck out five. Junior Kristen Esposito also went two for three and had an RBI. Well, then in game two, Casey did it from the plate as she hit a solo home run in the third inning, and Sarah Kreitzer hit a two-out RBI in the fifth inning to make the score two to nothing. Huntington scored a run in the sixth, but Casey came back in to save the game as she pitched that final shot out inning. The Wildcats win by a final score of 2-1. to one. Senior Casey Carson went 3-for-3 three three with a home run and an RBI two runs scored. Junior pitcher Carly Weaver pitched six innings, only giving up two hits and one run. Well, joining me now to talk about the sweep of the Foresters and a really solid season so far is Senior Casey Carson and the head coach of the Wildcats, uh, Coach Babinski. So, Coach, fans have seen you here on the show before. That's right. Let's introduce Casey a little bit. Uh, Casey, uh, you're senior here at Indiana Wesleyan. You transferred in earlier from uh, 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 Southern University down in Louisiana. But kind of tell us where you're from and what you're studying here at Indiana Wesleyan. I'm from Avon, Indiana, and I study criminal justice here at Indiana Wesleyan. Well, if, if you had your dream job when you're done, criminal justice major is there a particular area or field you'd like to go into um, I'm not really looking into this major uh -huh. right now but um, I interned with the fire department oh, awesome and I'm kind of looking into that now so. awesome well I did have one question for you though uh, talking about the game uh, uh, that first game against Huntington um, you know seven shutout innings then you come back in the second game is that pretty common or, uh, for you to be able to come back and, and pitch relief after starting the game and how does how do you kind of deal with those kind of different situations that was actually one of the first times this year um but i think i handled it well um it was fun <laughs> well coach that tells me you have a lot of confidence in in seniors uh in, in casey's abilities to, to kind of perform really two different kinds of uh of roles there for you yeah, the mentality is a lot different. Um, as a reliever or closer, you want to get your best stuff, and there's no pacing your stuff. It's it's all or nothing. Um, the question I always have is, um, where is the pitcher coming in? Mm -hmm. um, Casey has dealt with a, uh, a quad issue, mm -hmm. so there are times that I don't even want to mess with the idea of get her going again. Mm -hmm. uh, there are times where it's so clear, like against uh, Huntington, where um, the inning before is where they scored their mm -hmm. only run, so they were they're getting to our starter mm -hmm. starting pitcher a little bit, and so give them a, a change of perspective, and they they shouldn't have any confidence against Casey from game one not mm -hmm. being able to score runs. So it, it worked three three batters up, three down with with some tremendous defensive plays in that last inning. Well, it kind of leads me into into what I was going to ask you about two games mm -hmm. that are one run games big games in those to win those kinds you have to have obviously we talked about the really great pitching but you got to be playing some pretty solid defense in that mix too yeah last few weeks uh, we've really stepped it up um, sometimes we'll get into a, a one inning mm -hmm. um, uh, just collapse and then pick it up from there but um, I think we've for the most part remedied that uh, we will we will make a mistake or two but we've been able to overcome it um, by shutting the doors in other innings. So when we did make a, a miscue or two against the Foresters, we were able to shut the door. And mm -hmm. even as they th their, their style is to threaten and always have pressure on, um, and that's actually how they took a game from us a, a few weeks back, we were able <coughs> to remedy that and shut the doors early and often and be able to, to, to finish two full games. Now another key in these kind of games is you got ahead early. You mm. were playing from ahead and Casey mm. I was going to ask you in the second game you've pitched a shutout in the first now in the second game you come back and you get a big home run 
to get the team off to a good start. I think that was in the third inning. But mm -hmm. um, is there any better feeling as a pitcher who also hits? Mm -hmm. Would you rather pitch a shutout or would you rather hit a home run? What, <laughs> what's, you know, what's the better feeling? Home runs. <laughs> yeah. definitely. <laughs> definitely. You can't beat a home run feeling. And it is a lot of fun knowing that it's early on in the game and you've got, you've got us off to a good start. It builds a lot mm -hmm. of confidence with mm -hmm. your teammates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's important yeah. with this team. We, <laughs> yeah, I'm You sorry. need those boosts. Yeah, All right. exactly. I was going to ask you, big, big games now coming up mm -hmm. against St. Francis. Mm -hmm. um, you're a little over halfway through, through the conference season. But now you, you, know, you had some home games here. you got to go mm -hmm. back on the road against St. Francis. These are really big ones coming up for you guys. Absolutely. St. Francis is a, a lot of teams in our conference, they are just high energy, high pressure. Um, they, they might not have the same power or explosion as us, mm -hmm. um, but they are scrappy, mm -hmm. um, really, really take advantage of miscues. And mm -hmm. so St. Francis has come across some some really big wins in, in, in the last week or two. And so they're playing really good ball. Um, so playing St. Francis is is something that where we're, we're, we're excited for the challenge. We uh, face them at home and we're able to take two from them at home on a very windy, bizarre day. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're hoping that the wind isn't an, an, an issue. And so we can just uh, go out and, and, and play, play as a team and play play to the best of our ability. All right, well guys, again, congratulations on the wins. Uh, keep hitting home runs, Case, and we'll, uh, we'll hopefully get some more fans out there to cheer now that the weather is getting a little bit Amen. nicer. It's very nice outside. So again, congratulations on the win. Good luck against St. Francis, and since this is our final show of the season, we'll talk to you next year about uh, another season of Wildcat softball, okay? Thank you. Thank All you. right. Well, when up next uh, for the Wildcats, we said that doubleheader against St. Francis on April the 14th in Fort Wayne. Those games will begin approximately at 3 p.m. Well, when we come back to track and field athletes, we'll stop by and talk about the George Glass Invitational. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Well, the men and women's track and field team travel to Upland to compete in the George Glass Invitational on April the 8th. Four NAIA standards were set during the meet for the men. The 4x800 relay team finished first with a time of 7 minutes and 43.39 seconds. That team consisted of sophomore Chad Ellens, junior Michael Olson, junior Noah Stratton, and junior Josh Nidek. Senior Jacob Reinke also set a standard in the 5,000 meter run, finishing second with a time of 14 minutes, 49.99 seconds. Sophomore Brennan Coyle finished second in the shot put with a throw of 16.08 meters. Then for the women, sophomore Jalen Krantz finished in first place in the 100 meter hurdles with a time of 14.69 seconds. Well, joining me now are track and field athletes Jacob Reinke and junior Haley Meek. So guys, Welcome to the show. Haley, your first time here. Jacob, you're a veteran because yeah. I think you were here last <laughs> yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why don't we start off this way really quick. Is Haley, tell us just a little bit about yourself. Where are you from and what are you studying here yeah. at Indiana Wesleyan? I am from Columbus, Indiana. I went to Columbus North High School and mm -hmm. I'm studying strategic communication. Strategic communication. Mm -hmm. All right. And so for track and field, you, you're a sprinter. Yep. What events uh, do you participate in? I do all the short sprints. So the 100, the 200, and the 4 by one the four by one. So you're in a relay as yes, well. Yes, sir. Um, those are always fun. Mm -hmm. I'm not a track and field expert, but I know when I go to a meet, you love watching those sprint relays. Yeah. Okay, Jacob, you're a senior. Doesn't seem yep. hard to believe, but yeah. hometown is Fort Wayne. And Fort Wayne, you're a distance runner. Yes, sir. Yep. So, well, I know we talked about the 5,000 meter in track and field. Are there other events that you run? Uh, 5,000 is the primary the primary event. Um, I've done a couple. I've done one 10,000. That didn't. I mean, we won't talk about that, but, uh, and then I uh, do the 1500 as well. So. Okay. So after running 5,000, 1500, you don't just, you don't want to run 800 more sometimes? No, no, <laughs> right. it doesn't, does not appease me. <laughs> All right. And what are you studying here? Sports management. Sports yep. management. Okay. Well, we talked a little bit about that, the George Glass invite over at Taylor. Um, I mentioned, and in the read, we talked about NAI standards and Jacob, you were going to kind of maybe help us understand there's NAI standards yeah. and there are B standards. What are the 
difference and what does that mean for either a team or a relay or, or an individual or a relay? Yeah, so basically um, it's a little bit confusing for people who aren't really in the sport. Um, an A standard basically means that if you hit a certain time, so mm -hmm. like I've hit the time of 1444.99, uh, if you hit anything 1445 or under for the 5K, mm -hmm. then you're automatically considered an A standard and you automatically qualify for nationals. Mm -hmm. A B standard is a time that's, or a throw that's a little bit uh, not as, I mean, it's not as good, but it's still good. Um, so like, for example, I'll use the 5K again. Mm -hmm. um, it's a 1459. So if you hit anywhere from 1459 to 1445, mm -hmm. then you're considered a B standard. And the way B standards work is if there's not enough people who hit the A standard that mm -hmm. year, B standards are used as kind of like a provisional, mm -hmm. like acceptance type thing for okay. nationals. So the top, I mean, if there's not 16 people who hit the A standard, then the top 16 uh, a standards and B standards mm -hmm. get to go to nationals. Um, so they set markers for you to at least shoot at. Yes. You kind of know where you stand in terms of qualifying for yeah. the national yeah, tournament. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Well, um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, your next meet coming up. It's, that's the Indiana Little State. And yep. uh, normally that is a meet that is held here at Indiana West, and we okay. host it a lot. Yeah. With the construction of the, the football stadium, it was moved to Taylor this year. Yeah. Um, we'll see what next year holds. But uh, that's a that's a really interesting meet. It's a fun meet. It's mm -hmm. a cool meet because you kind of Haley, I'll ask you this: you get to test yourself against every school in the state of Indiana. I think yeah. outside of like four large Division One schools. Right. So uh, huge meet, but it's mm -hmm. got to be a lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's really fun to see where you line up against conference schools and schools um, all across the state, and just like test your skills against one another. It's I don't know if you can put it this way. It almost feels like like the unofficial state championship, yeah. week, if you yeah, will, for, for small schools. Um, it's good for you, though. Also, you'll be running at Taylor mm -hmm. because the conference meet is at Taylor this year. Mm -hmm. And so, Jacob, getting uh, each track is a little bit different, and so it it's good experience to get yeah. you're running that track as well. You've had the George Glass. You'll have little state and then yep. you have conference. Yeah, so we'll definitely be used to it by the time conference comes around, that's for sure. Um, it's, I mean, the facilities, it's a facility. Um, it works for what they have. I mean, it's not, not anything that we're used to, but I mean, we get to get used to it mm -hmm. by having these two uh, with the George Glass invite and then the little state and then conference is really the ultimate goal, so. When we look at the conference, it, track is an interesting sport because you're individuals mm -hmm. that can win championships, yep. but you're trying to win a team championship. Exactly. Yep. Um, Haley, for the ladies, yeah. when you look at conference, what would be the goal? I, I imagine conference championship, but is there a goal that we want to reach the top two, three, or the number one? Where, where do you guys, we've, or what do you talk about? Yeah, there? We've won the last three years on the ladies' side, um, so our goal again is to win. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some pretty tough competition with Bethel, as always. Mm -hmm. um, but we're stacking it pretty well against them so far in meets that we've seen them in. Um, so the goal is just to perform at our best and try to win for a fourth time. Jacob, same question for the guys. When you look at conference, championship always yeah. would be the goal. Yeah. But uh, um, when you look at it, we'll be happy if we finish here. Uh, I think, I don't know if there's a ever we'll be happy if we even finish second type <laughs> of deal. Yeah. Um, we always want to get the championship. Yeah. Um, we always want to get the team title. Um, it's escaped us for the past three or four years at least. I mean, we haven't won since I've been here. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, Marion's a very mm -hmm. uh, good track team. Uh, they have been, I think they've won the past three years mm -hmm. um, in a row. And so we're always gunning for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we're always like right there with them, either yeah. second or third. Um, so, I mean, it'll be a battle. Uh, we'll just have to go out there and give it our all, so. Well, guys, uh, again, uh, Best of luck. Thank it's you. nice Thank to you. be outdoors. The weather hasn't yeah. been too terrible, yeah, exactly. which yeah. it can be here in Indiana. Yeah. But uh, good luck to you as you kind of start to really move into the championship yeah. portion of your season. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Well, next, uh, up for track and field, as we said, it'll be back to Taylor as they compete in the Indiana Little State Championships. The dates for that are April 21st and 22nd, not this weekend, but next. Well, when we come back, Sophomore baseball player Andrew Brayton Box stops by to talk about a tough stretch for the Wildcats, but uh, some good things looking ahead, so stick around.
Well, welcome back to Wildcat Week. The baseball team traveled to Indianapolis to face off against the Knights of Marion University on April 11th. <clears throat> In game one, the Wildcats outhit the Knights 10 to 6. However, the Wildcats left 12 men on base while Marion only stranded five. Now, the Knights took the first game by a final score of five to nothing. Freshman Brady West went three for four with a double and fellow freshman Tanner Killian went two for three in that loss. <coughs> Excuse me. Now in game two, Brandon Schaefer scored on a pass ball in the first and Jordan Wharton added an RBI in the second. And after two innings, though the Wildcats trailed three to two in the seventh, Andrew Breitenbach delivered a two run single to give the Wildcats a five to four advantage. But a pair of errors by the Wildcats gave the Knights a walk off win in the 10th. The Knights won by a final score of six to five. Senior Brandon Schaefer went three for five with two runs scored. Uh, Andrew Breitenbach went one for five with three RBIs. And speaking of Andrew, joining me now uh, to talk about really a tough loss and a doubleheader to the Knights is Andrew Breitenbach. So Andrew, tell us a little bit about you. Where are you from and what are you studying here? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm from Palatine, Illinois. It's a suburb north of Chicago, about mm -hmm. 40 minutes. And I'm studying accounting and finance right now at Indiana Wesleyan. So Palatine, Cubs? Yes, big, right. big Cubs fan. I imagine you have family and friends who have <laughs> a lot of stories to talk about or, or about last year's Cubs. Yeah, yeah, lots of stories. It was definitely an exciting time for everybody up there by us. So it was good to see. Um, we talked a bit of, uh, about the, the, the Knights loss. And, and one of the things that kind of s stood out to me is you were in that ball, in both those ball games. Uh, um, but maybe a little bit of the youth came into play or you know, some errors late in that game. On this team, one senior, a handful of sophomores, a handful of juniors, 20 freshmen. So a lot different than last year, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's very different. Last year we had a ton of seniors who kind of showed us the ropes, and mm -hmm. especially later in the season when we were in the postseason and stuff mm -hmm. like that, uh, their leadership really came through, and they, they pulled us under their wing and they showed mm -hmm. us uh, how to play baseball late in games. And this year it's just been tough because they're all freshmen and they're all in these situations mm -hmm. and they're out there learning and they're making mistakes as they go. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just been a frustrating season so far, but we're confident that going forward, they've, they've made the mistakes and they've learned from them. So going forward, it'll be a different story, so. Oh yeah, there's a lot of baseball left to be yeah. played this season, isn't yeah. there? Now, that comes, or what we were talking about, kind of that, that switch from a senior laden team to a freshman laden team. It's especially big for you as a catcher because uh, now you, you're trying to help out a pitching staff or lead a pitching staff from behind the plate. And like you said, a lot of freshmen. Last year you had a whole crop of senior pitchers there kind of showing you the ropes. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely uh, been different because a lot of the guys came from high schools where they were the starters mm -hmm. and uh, they would, would go complete games and stuff like that. And uh, it's a different game when you get to college mm -hmm. because you have relievers, you have closers, you have setup guys, and then you only have a handful of starters. Yeah. So a lot of these guys, they've had to learn how to adjust to their mm -hmm. new roles as well as how to pitch to college hitters because obviously the hitters are a lot more talented at this level. So. Now, another big change in terms of how the Crossroads League is doing their scheduling is for years it was you played two double headers. Well, now against, let's say, coming up against Goshen. Well, now is you're going to play one single game that's a nine inning game. And then also later then you'll play a double header, two seven inning games. Mm -hmm. But uh, it really does eliminate a lot of these splits. And you'll definitely have someone who is won a series, so to speak. Yeah. Um, the difference between, though, a seven-inning game and a nine-inning game, it can be quite significant, can it? Yeah, it gives, it gives the hitters a little bit more time to adjust to the pitching and to get some runs later in the mm -hmm. game, obviously, if they're off to a slow start. And then from a pitching standpoint, um, you, you might have some guys, like starters, who are able to go longer mm -hmm. into the game as opposed to other guys. And um, if, if you can get to a team early in a, in a series in a nine inning game, it forces them to go to their bullpen early mm -hmm. and then it could set them back pitching wise for the whole weekend. So that's a big advantage of the nine inning set so far. One of the things I think you mentioned or hint, hinted to is that depth in the pitching staff has become much more important. And, and I think that's one of the things that the coach staff here has tried to, tried to develop with us is, mm -hmm. is a lot of depth. And again, it's young, but uh, we got a pretty good stable of pitchers and guys who have some good arms, don't we? Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, 
Out of our bullpen, we got a couple sophomore arms mm -hmm. that have really been good for us. Uh, Kyle Hall, mm -hmm. Alexander Breitenbach, they've been really good as well. Uh, they've chewed up a lot of innings. And then we also have a couple young freshman arms mm -hmm. uh, from the bullpen as well that are still learning the ropes and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But they've got a lot of talent, and they're mm -hmm. learning the game really well. And uh, we've got a couple good freshman starters. Uh, John Young, he's been the Crossroads mm -hmm. League Pitcher of the Week a couple times. He's, he's really talented. And uh, Connor Cantrell and Austin Swift as well. There's some young freshman arms that have really been developing. Well, so. uh, last question, Andrew, as we head down the stretch now and, it, you know, get deeper into the season, and uh, I do sense that there's, there's some confidence that we could get on a roll. This, and, and when a young team can get on a roll, then they can be pretty dangerous, can't mm -hmm. they? Yeah. It feels like the entire season we've kind of been – learning and going as we go. Mm -hmm. But I feel like right now all the pieces are in place for us to make a good run here at the end towards the, uh, the conference championship. So I'm excited. Awesome. Well, we're excited for you and looking forward to maybe getting out there and catching a little more baseball yes, here. Sure. Thank you. All right. Well, next up for the Wildcats, we've hinted at it, but it's the Goshen College Maple Leafs who come into town for a game on April the 13th and then a doubleheader on April the 15th. The game on April the 13th will start at approximately 6 p.m. The doubleheader on Saturday will be a 3 p.m. start. Well, that is all we have for this year, but we'll be back in the fall. But there are a couple people involved with sports coverage who are graduating and moving on to bigger things. Not necessarily better, but bigger things. So we want to just take a moment and recognize these guys. Derek Gown has been a student producer on this show over the past year and has been announcing multiple sports in contributing in many ways these past couple of years. So we say thanks to Darren and a little reminder, we always say to Darren, don't taste the morsel. Tim Tedeschi has been with us for the last four years, calling multiple sports many times with me even, and uh, it's just been a great time. So even though he's a Buckeye, we will miss Tim Tedeschi. And then Zach Allen, another four-year veteran who has been producing this show the last several years and working in all facets of our sports coverage and production. Some of you may remember Zach as the premier uh, football sideline reporter on high school games. Well, we wish those guys the best of luck in the future. Well, that's all we have for this season of Wildcat Week. If you'd like to watch more of Wildcat Week, though, you can visit our website, WIWTV.com. You can watch past episodes and connect with us online. Again, that's WIWTV.com. Well, we look forward to being back with you next fall. So for all of us here, Thank you for watching Wildcat Week.